This video is brought to you by my awesome Patreon supporters. To help support my work, keep my videos ad-free, and get rewards, follow the link in the description below. You can then select a tier depending on your budget, and every little bit helps. Thank you! So I think the first thing I would like to show people who are like nervous about when people tanuki all over the board and they don't know what to do is just like understand that like it's okay to it's okay to follow your opponent if that's like in line with your global strategy. Because if your if your opponent comes back to this area, they're gonna play out the Joseki and theoretically it should be an even result. Now all that matters is what did you want to get in exchange for all of these things, right? You could completely follow this up. But if your opponent Get, oops, if your opponent somehow gets sente, maybe they do something like this. And now they have sente and they can like attack your corner again. So it's, it's conceivable your opponent gets sente from you attacking their tanukied stone um, in that specific area. So it, there's a lot more flexibility than you think, but I think understanding that like it's, if you come back to, if your opponent plays in a place that you left, like here, it's still an even result. I think that's fine. So why, why I did this because I wanted to try to develop the top side. That was my goal. My goal was to, I had a stone here. I had stones here. I wanted to try to develop this area and pin strength felt like the most aggressive way to do that. And then so we, we pin start again. And so now we have even more decision trees to explore. And my thinking for just backing off, right? So you might be asking, well, why didn't I follow up here? Why didn't I follow up here? How do I decide? How did I decide what to respond to, right? And some of it's instinct, but the other part of it is like trying to understand how each local battle affects the board and how you can best prepare for that local battle that's going to affect the board. So I played here because I knew that these two stones were pincered against this black stone or this white stone. If the white stone tries to escape, the odds are I'll be able to get an extension off this stone. If I get an extension off the stone, then that stone becomes pressured and I can attack and extend at the same time. So I didn't just back off because whatever, backing off. I backed off because I could, I figured that if I tried to play for a Joseki where I can get a free extension off the stone, I would be able to attack while extending, have a multi-purpose move down. As expected, I was ready for him to protect this stone um, so I could play there, but Uru actually kind of called my bluff there in a sense. He caught that and decided to take that away himself. So both players, you can see, are kind of conscious of what would be a game-breaking decision, right? What would probably be game-breaking Would be if black like defended here, passively. Something. Black plays here and then here. Now all of a sudden, white's group has to run. And black can attack this group while developing shape to basically white invested a ton of stones in quite literally no territory. And that was all because of how this battle affected this situation. So we can see that both players were conscious of that situation. And Uru did not let that happen. He played here, which is why, and that's good. That's like advanced go instincts right there. There's still a very real invasion point that can use this stone. Um, and I was contemplating whether to do this right away or not, but I figured that he owed me a move no matter what in there, and I'd be able to use this stone kind of no matter what. So I thought that a bigger move would be to just take another corner. 
And again, you might ask, you know, well, why didn't you follow up with this stone? My reasoning was, if I got a strong group here, then this pincer, oops, that if the Josekis, oops, if the Josekis go naturally, we make a standard Joseki. I have a very strong follow-up now here. So I've set up the bottom right side of the board to make my attack on the bottom left side of the board that much more aggressive, right? So I didn't just take advantage of the Tanuki Joseki right away. I played a move that, from what I could tell, if we played the standard way, would result in at least Sente for me because he would have to do something about this. Because if he doesn't, I would my this group would now be breathing down his neck. And then I'm developing moist. Now it's an even result, but I got all that in Sente and I got this group on the board. And at the very worst, it's even. So that was sort of my thoughts um, behind why I played this move. Because if I played here, it's conceivable that um, So now think about if this happened, right? If black had tried to take this position right away, now white has this move. Now let's say black tries to approach this. Now white actually has an extremely powerful series of pincer moves against the stone that work as a dual purpose to not only pincer the black stone, but build upon the influence slash small amount of territory that white had already created. So we can see the difference, right? Between if we tried to attack this right away and then did our standard approach, white's able to make a dual purpose move. And now black would have to try to, you know, do something to settle. Maybe black would have to go down here. Um, but basically white gets more out of this deal versus the other way, if I set up my attack first, now my attack is much stronger. Now white has to play something like this. And I still get all my points. So now this is about even, I have stuff here. Compare that to the other line that I had shown where I'm, this is about even, but white now kind of has an attack on my group. White has more initiative this way, especially because it's Sente. So oh, thank you, thank you, Jack of Jack and Muffin. I'm very glad that you enjoy them. Um, this will probably be a YouTube video soon. Um, In the real game, White decided to attack anyway, and then we kind of got into a fight. Um, but that sort of, I think explains, I hope kind of explains my thought processes behind, and I'm still learning, but when I decide to pincer something or when I decide to play away from a Tanuki or when I decide to follow up a Tanuki, for me, all I'm thinking about if somebody plays away or something does something in the opening is, how can I turn the unfinished Josekis in the board into stronger versions of those Josekis, right? If you know a few basic Josekis, you can combine them in different parts of the board, like we did here. This was an unfinished Joseki. I played here, white played away. This is an unfinished Joseki. If you have a basic knowledge of shape and you have a basic knowledge of Josekis, you know that, you know, it's going to flow something like this. This is kind of how the flow is going to be. If you're experienced and you understand Josekis, like that's going to be the flow. So the question is, how do I make this flow work better, work in my favor, work stronger for me? Is there something I can do on the other part of the board? And 
That's why I decided to back off because I saw that if you did the standard flow, I have a dual purpose move on the stones. And so now the flow gave me an opportunity to attack something with my move over there, which it wouldn't, it couldn't have done before. And just to reiterate the same thing over here, um, I didn't attack this right away because I was thinking about what it would turn into. And if we play the, the one standard Joseki, I know what it is. Now it makes me trying to get a stone down here a little bit more difficult because if I try to do something, maybe I get kicked and maybe I get pincered. And now this, this move is just so much stronger because it's backed up by the Joseki that I had forced previously. So it makes more sense and this is a very complex topic, so I apologize if I'm butchering the explanation. But that's why for me it made more sense to try to settle the corner first so that I could potentially have a more severe attack on the bottom left. So that's kind of that's like kind of my mini lecture-ish thing on what I'm thinking about when people are playing away from Joseki's, people are tanuking from Joseki's, like how I'm deciding what to do. Cause I'm not really a big Tanuki away from Joseki's. I generally play things out. Um, but I hope that made sense. Does anyone have any questions? Did I explain that completely wrong? If I do, or if you do have questions, let me know. <laughs> okay. Great. Excellent. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's really what I think about is how do you make your, how can you make your Joseki work together and how can you set up your Joseki so that the standard continuations are decent? And like, I didn't play any super complex Joseki. Like I wasn't visualizing like magic sword Joseki. I was just, it was the very basic flow, super basic flow of what happens in a pincer versus what happens when you extend, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. 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 So we're going to try the low Chinese approach because that usually prompts Tanukis. Exactly. Okay. Beautiful example. So our opponent uh, followed this up with this. Now, question, do we Tanuki? Do we not Tanuki? And if we do Tanuki, where are we gonna Tanuki to? And this all depends on the plan of the game, okay? So if I Tanuki, odds are I'm going to be going into the corner, yeah? What's probably gonna happen is our opponent is going to, direction of play, build a wall facing his stones. If he builds a wall facing his stones using the standard 3-3 three, three Joseki that I'm thinking about, I don't know if he wa I want him to do that yet. I'm not sure about how this game is going to develop. Additionally, tanuking one stone you can do. If you respond once, you're kind of locked into that group. Because if you respond and you place another stone on the board, now you need to resolve it. And so for me, I don't know if I want to get into an influence game right away. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to simply enclose because this does a few things. One, it still leaves the option open later on in the game for me to do this. Two, if they do try to spend more moves on the stone, I get a free move somewhere else, which I think in the opening is just as big. And the question is, do I Tanuki here or do I Tanuki here? Right? So those are really the questions. I'm going to Tanuki here because I feel like this makes this corner stronger so they can't sort of use this stone to launch an attack on this group. So I'm actually going to play here. And that's why I'm Tanukiing away from my stone. I don't know what the best thing for this to do is, quite honestly. I don't know. 
So now they're playing this. Okay, so now I have a few options. I can dive in the corner again. I can go up, over, over. Or I can just keep Tanukiing. If I do keep Tanukiing, and they play this, there's still ways for me to get value out of this still. So I think the best thing to do is to keep playing away. Because as soon as we play a stone in this area, we're going to be committing to this area. And I don't know if I want to do that yet. So now we see his plan. The plan is ultra influence. That's what he wants. He wants, or they, they want me to go in the corner and in the corner. And so now I have two corners. They have this whole thing on the board, right? That's the idea. Now, do I like that trade? Do I like, do I want to play that game? Really? Do I want to play the game where I go here, I go there, I go there, and you build a wall, I make territory, I make territory, you get a wall. Do I want to fight these two walls? If I do, then fine, I do that. If I don't, then I think of something else to do. I think I'm going to try it for this corner. For this corner, though, I might jump out. So he did that. Now, if I do this, that same thing, he's going to play that on this group, for sure. If I do this, he's going to play that on this group. So I think this time I'm going to jump out. And we're going to go in. And we are going to start attacking these two stones now. Because now I know what he's trying to do. If I would have let him, if I would have let him play this Joseki down here, if I would have responded to his pincer, to their pincer, and then they played the same one over here, I probably would have been double pincered and had these double walls, and I don't want to play that way. I really don't. So that's kind of how I think about this. So I might shut up now and try to, the opening's kind of starting to be over. So I might shut up as much and like try to read. But that's, that is my thought process going through this opening.